This mega cruiser is sailing straight into hot water. We are in maximum weather condition that uh, we can handle. Push to the limit to keep things cool. It's probably pushing high 30s or almost 90 degrees. Taking her passengers on encounters they could never imagine. They look at this piece of meat and go, I want you instead. Celebrity Solstice is a floating gateway to a wild world of adventure. Just paradise. This cruise ship has to prove she has what it takes to explore Australia's untamed coast. Celebrity Solstice is floating proof that even on a huge ship, it's the small things that matter. Attention to detail is what sets this mega cruiser apart. Yeah, everything on schedule. Hey guys, how's it going? 1,040 feet long, 122,000 gross tons, 16 decks high. Solstice was the first ship of her class. She was launched in 2008, and her design was such a success, Celebrity Cruises built four more just like her. This is her second summer touring Australia, but she's yet to prove herself as the toughest ship down under. Looks great, awesome job. The glamorous main dining room encompasses two decks. Passengers have their choice of nine other restaurants and cafes as well as 15 bars, a disco, and casino. She even boasts a lawn with real grass. We are heading north up to the coast. Captain Zizas Teramas commands a crew of 1,255 people and has been in charge of Celebrity Solstice for just four months. Of her size, the equipment that she has, the luxury that she has, it's an honor. She's docked in Fremantle on Australia's west coast. Celebrity Solstice has been here only once before, and this is just the second time she'll embark on the voyage ahead. From Fremantle, she'll head up the west coast to Port Hedland. Then head to Indonesia for a visit to Bali. She will return to Northern Australia with a stop in Darwin. Then travel 1,700 miles to Airly Beach for some snorkeling along the Great Barrier Reef. From there, it's south to Brisbane, Newcastle, and finally Sydney. It's a 6,000 mile journey Two thousand eight hundred fifty passengers are checking in, and since this cruise lasts seventeen days, no one is traveling light. As on any cruise ship, one of the top concerns is food. On this voyage, it's a particular challenge because Celebrity Solstice will be at sea for almost three weeks. Very healthy. Very good. Fresh parsley. That's more than 200,000 meals to plan. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we average between 13 and 15,000 meals a day, so that's a lot of food product. Chef Jeffrey Haviland hits the pier warehouse, making sure every single item meets his expectations. If there's any issues with quality during the cruise, it's too bad for us. And despite his hard work, he's already run into a problem. Well, I've opened one of the um, radicchio, and I've found some, um, see there's bugs. With our menu cycle, I won't be using this particular product for another five days. So in five days, we would have had greater bug infestation, it would have spread to the rest of the box. I've already paid for it. So it's A, economics, and B, um, food quality. If we find incidents in once, we have to reject the entire lot. 200 pounds of radicchio have to be replaced. And it's not like Jeff can just dash out to the supermarket. It's a scramble for the vendors, a big, big scramble, yeah. How y'all doing? How are you today? Good morning. Meanwhile, 
Hotel director Tom Brady is busy clearing the ship of nearly 3,000 people from the last voyage and getting things ready to bring the same number back on in just nine hours. Turnaround is the toughest day. There's 3,000 guests off, 3,000 guests on, 20,000 pieces of luggage off, 20,000 pieces of luggage back on, and the whole provisioning. It's all hands on deck, it's a long day, but for us, it's also the most important day for us, because with the new guests, that's our first impression of the ship. So have you cruised with us before, it's your first time with us? No, this is the first time with you. Thank you. You're welcome, have a great day. As Tom works on the big picture, inventory manager Giovanni Ruiz is sorting through the details like finding new radicchio. Thanks. Are you able to replace it? Well, I'm going to hold the markets right now okay. and see if there's radicchio there. And then we'll have it checked up there to make okay. sure it's not from the same batch. And then get it down here. It takes about 45 minutes. It's where it gets really chaotic right now. But Giovanni has more on his plate than just lettuce. He's responsible for more than 100,000 pounds of fresh fruit and vegetables, 30,000 pounds of meat, 24,000 pounds of poultry, and 15,000 pounds of fish. Uh, big responsibility. Giovanni has just seven hours to move a warehouse full of food into the ship's massive holds. But this has to go in the forward. With Giovanni laboring away on the pier, Tom Brady has his eye on the thermometer as his guests settle in under the hot sun. Morning, how are you today? Yeah, feels great outside. It's probably pushing high 30s or almost 90 degrees. It's getting humid. We always like to gently remind our guests to make sure they got sunscreen on. The sun here is very strong. It's an unusually hot summer, even by Australian standards. That heat poses a threat to the ship's three key systems. The engines, the propulsion, and most important on this voyage, the air conditioning. In 22 years at sea, Chief Engineer Stavros Zanikos has rarely faced a challenge like this. It's uh, really the test of the ship. Seawater provides cooling to all three operations. But if the water temperature exceeds 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the system as a whole will be pushed to the limit. And it looks like that may happen on the voyage ahead. In the next uh, days, we will uh, face seawater temperature approximately 32 and 33. The ship is powered by four diesel electric generators. Together, they can create up to 67 megawatts of electricity. If it gets too hot, the engine room will have no choice but to limit power to the propellers and divert it to the air conditioning to keep the guests cool could slow Celebrity Solstice down, but she can't be late in finishing this voyage. We are in real test in the maximum uh, weather condition that uh, we can handle. Every ship has her limit, and Celebrity Solstice may just meet hers ahead. By sunset, the holds are full of fresh food, including a new shipment of radicchio. 2,850 guests are aboard. Security confirmed to us when all the side doors are closed and secure. Now we disconnected. Let go left. The last lines are coming out. We start thrusting the bow, easy. At 10 p.m., the ship's captain gives the order to begin a long, hot voyage. Two, two, four. Three, two, four. Aye, aye. I will maintain up to six knots until the turn. Celebrity Solstice set sail on a 17-day adventure that could test the ship and the passengers' patience in Australia's scorching heat. It's day four of a 17-day cruise around the north coast of Australia. Celebrity Solstice is entering a port that her captain has never visited. Better water closer to the channel. It's a place called Port Headland, 
and the ship has sailed more than 900 miles to get here. This is an industrial harbor that cruise ships like Celebrity Solstice rarely enter. My first time here as a captain, we are the only cruise ship in the port that is calling today. And also, uh, not to forget that this port is a mining port that exports roughly a million tons of ore per day. Definitely, we are uh, attract the attention of all the cargo ships uh, that are in the Anchorage. The vast harbor here supports big industry, so bringing in a massive cruise ship is no problem. Celebrity Solstice neatly docks at the pier. Position, Roger on that. Forward, hold your spring well. We are in position. Security, if they want to place gangway, place gangway. Roger that. Captain, we are good to place gangway. This port of call is partly meant to break up the monotony at sea, and many passengers go ashore to explore Port Headland's rough edges. So we have a green light to proceed. Thank you, Chief. But the engineers see this stop as an opportunity to work on the ship's critical steering system. Most ships are driven through the water by propellers and steered by rudders set behind them. Celebrity Solstice has a more advanced system, a pair of propeller units that can rotate 360 degrees in any direction. They're called azipods, and they not only drive the ship, but also give Celebrity Solstice pinpoint precision steering. The ship's navigation will be tested in unfamiliar ports ahead, as well as along the Great Barrier Reef where the slightest navigational error could damage that world-famous, fragile ecosystem. So Chief Engineer Stavros Sanikos wants the Azipods inspected from the inside out. It's a very good opportunity to make the inspection today because we have a very long uh, trip with a lot of days at sea and we want uh, both Azipods and uh, both systems in very good working order. The Azipods are over 26 feet high, five times taller than an average man. They're electrically driven, so examining the wiring and connections is crucial. So is looking for hydraulic or lubricant leaks that could cripple this big ship. Engineer Patrick Matos is assigned to examine the claustrophobic chamber. This is very tight atmosphere down. I would not like to see any discolorations on the windings, on connections, on diodes, on electrical. I would not like to see also any oil leakages because it will affect complete pod. Looks good. There is no any overcurrent. There is no any mechanical stresses on this azipod. The azipods check out readying Celebrity Solstice for her first voyage into the difficult and precise maneuvers ahead. Inspection uh, completed. Everything was good. We are ready to go. But the hot seawater temperatures still have the chief engineer worried. These conditions, more than 32 Celsius, we will operate and run the ship out of limits. At sunset, passengers return aboard from their tour of Port Headland, and the cruise ship's long, exotic journey continues. After another day of fun and sun, guests get ready to taste what Chef Jeffrey Haviland has to offer. And his staff is on edge, because Jeff is a tough taskmaster. Okay, guys, gather around, please. Menu tasting for tonight. Let's go. The next one, we have a veal loin. We serve it with the creamy parmesan polenta, um, julian carrots, broccolini, and the sauce is the veal juice. Beautiful. Perfect, mate. Perfect done. We cook the uh, polenta, guys. Yes, we make sure we keep it covered. Excellent, guys. Well done. The food quality is excellent. Please, please, please. Make sure this evening that the guests are getting the best possible service. 
and dining experience. Food and beverage manager Simon Coley braces the wait staff for an intense evening. One they need to pull off 17 days straight. We're serving uh, each evening around about two and a half thousand guests. And uh, each one expects the dinner to be better than the night before. Please keep up the hard work. I know it's long cruises, but you guys do a fantastic job. Please keep it going. It's a huge logistical challenge, and especially on the ships. Uh, it's, it's more intense than you would see on land. So it's absolutely imperative for us that we get this right. We'll probably do around about 1,800 guests tonight, so this uh, is very hot and fast down here on deck three. We Basically, we have a half hour service period where everything will move through this kitchen. So it gets very hot, it's very fast service. There's steam everywhere. It's a little bit of controlled chaos, so we try and keep as much uh, silence on the line as we can. And tonight, yeah, we know the dishes. The guys are very focused. Uh, everything's about the quality of the dishes. Everything's about getting the, the meals to the guests in the minimum possible time. Dinner goes off without a hitch. Excellent, guys. Next morning, the most unique feature of Celebrity Solstice is getting special, crucial attention from Nelson Bustillo and Cassius Nanquil. After this, we need to put uh, some sands to replace the soil profile. It's called the Lawn Club, and it's more than 22,000 square feet of green space on the ship's upper deck. We need to hurry up, Nelson, because yes, the sand is coming out. The salt uh, is our number one enemy because uh, it can kill the grass instantly. And if you don't attend to the salt spray and don't do anything, it will kill the grass. Keeping grass alive on the open, salty seas under hot Australian sun is a constant battle. The key thing to Fighting the salt is monitoring the weather and then splashing it with water and hand water it manually. The love of the lawn is in our hearts. And every morning if you go up here, you'll see the best view in the world. Another day passes, and ocean temperatures now hover around 31 degrees Celsius, or 88 Fahrenheit. If they rise further, seawater will no longer be able to keep the engines cool. Early on day six, Celebrity Solstice arrives in the port of Benoa on the island of Bali, Indonesia. The harbor here is too small to handle the huge cruise ship. Solstice has six small boats, called tenders, that can carry 120 passengers each. While she's anchored at a safe distance, the tenders will take guests ashore for their first really exotic excursion. Shore excursion manager Ava Mikulkova is feeling the pressure. Do I look stressed? <laughs> yes, I feel a little stressed because I just want to make sure the guests get the full experience so that we don't have to cut any tour short, you know, that they get off the ship on time and they can experience this island. 1,500 guests begin to move in a constant stream from the ship's theater to the tenders. After two boats are loaded, there's a major setback. We have a tender which is not working right now. But they're working on it, they're trying to fix it, it's something with the engine. This is going to slow down the whole process, the whole disembarkation process. We have people waiting upstairs in the theater to get off the ship, so of course this is going to delay the whole operation. Can I send more groups mid ship? Okay, how many? Hey, how's it going down there? I'll be there in just a second. Hotel director Tom Brady knows the delay means unhappy passengers, and it's his job to keep them smiling at any cost. Just find out we have a tender that's not working. This is really going to put a little bit of a cramp in my style this morning. The rush is on to get everyone ashore on schedule and to get the broken tender back in operation. 
It's day six of a 17-day voyage, and a shore visit from celebrity solstice to the island of Bali has hit a major snag. We'll go on the next one. The next one will be here in a second. One of her tender boats is not working. I've got to get it fixed now. Uh, it's such a, a, a sketch. We got these tenders going in and out with the mass amount of guests moving around. One non-function tenor can really uh, cause me some grief today. Hotel director Tom Brady works with shore excursion manager Ava Mikulkova they to get 1,500 passengers ashore with one less tender than planned. Yes, we have. We called all the groups from 1 through 18. I feel a little lost right now because I know that I have all these people upstairs waiting. But what can we do? That's the way it is. And like, hopefully they will fix it on time and the people will understand. It's now up to first engineer Marios Venezelu to fix the tender. And have this uh, plier. Is the plier? So that's the problem. This uh, seawater impeller is broken. That's why we had the high temperature on the engine. So we have to replace it as fast as possible. Without this, you don't have any cooling to cool down the engine. That's a new part. You see the difference? So we're gonna have to put this one back. You cannot uh, run the engine without the uh, cooling. Yeah, the tender is fixed. It's all ready to go back. The impeller is back in uh, position. We already tested and it is to go back. Marios completes the repair in 45 minutes, delaying just one tender trip ashore, putting the excursion barely behind schedule. Now, the trip to Bali goes off perfectly. Local Tender Marina number 11, can you please proceed to the mission platform? Later that day, Captain Teramas keeps a close eye on the tender's return. With his mind on the time, he has a schedule to keep, with lots of other potential delays ahead. Forward Morning Station, prepare the starboard anchor to be heaved up. Stop is Darwin, 1,100 miles away. It's a long run, and the crew is working hard to keep the guests entertained. Welcome to the hot glass stage. How's everybody doing today? It's great to see so many of you here this morning. Chef Jeffrey Haviland offers to spice up the voyage, showing off his skills in a cooking demonstration. We're focusing on, um, on Australian seafood today. We've got a live cooking demonstration, how to cook the perfect fish. So they love to see it when I get up and cook as well. See if the head chef can cut his finger while he's doing some prep. The guests are impressed with Jeff's show, but some are beginning to grouse about his menu. There are complaints that the food in the buffet restaurant is getting predictable. They're looking for more variety on the buffet. They're looking for more variety in the venues themselves. So we've got a meeting with the hotel director this morning. He's asked me last night basically to come up with some suggestions and ideas and initiatives to how we can make the experience in the Ocean View Cafe a little bit more uh, varied and wow factor. Jeff goes to the ship stores looking for inspiration. I'm looking around for some ideas to um, basically revamp the Ocean View Cafe buffet. So I'm looking at what we're carrying that's excess um, that we can use, with, which won't impact our main dining room. We've got ample product to do, do something fantastic up in Ocean View Cafe, but um, oh, this is magnificent. Look at this. This is great stuff. The produce is a good start, but he needs something extra special, and he'll have to wait two days until the next port to get it. On day nine of the journey, Celebrity Solstice sails into Darwin. Very good. In position, we'll push it in.
Here, many passengers head to Litchfield Park for a swim by the falls. But some opt for the most daring excursion of the cruise. They're cruising down the Adelaide River, one of the Northern Territory's major river systems. Tour director Peter Saltmarsh takes them crocodile hunting. Looking for saltwater crocodiles. It's the largest crocodile in the world. The wildlife authorities are telling us that today we've got, on average, on any waterway, a crocodile for every 100 metres of waterway. Upstairs we've got uh, Crystal and Jackie. They're feeding the crocodiles for us today. And um, yeah, they're pretty good at what they do. Sisters Crystal and Jackie Gray run the show, and they know the wild crocodiles by name. Okay, we have Mum, Trevor, Michael Jackson, Barbecue, Casanova. This is the bait we use, and we use buffalo because it's a natural source up here. It's a natural food source for them. We put this on the long pole and um, tie it with a piece of rope and then hang the string on the rope. And when the croc takes it, that this string here should instantly just snap off. They look at this piece of meat and go, I don't think so, I want you instead. It does get very dangerous, you've got to remember that you are in a croc infested river that has between two and a half to 10,000 saltwater crocodiles in it and you're leaning over the boat feeding a crocodile, it's easy for one to sort of line you up underneath. You've got to constantly remind yourself that these are man-eating creatures and they will kill you instantly if you fall in. Or even if you're not, they'll try to get in the boat and kill you. Passengers enjoy the river tour and they'll return to the ship with all the limbs they brought with them. While the crocs jump, Chef Jeff scours Darwin for new menu ideas to respond to guests' complaints about repetition in the buffet restaurant. Okay, this looks more promising. So I'm cashed up in local currency, ready to go. Cash is king, you know what they say. Seiko! Chef Jeff, mate, from the ship. Good morning. How are you, mate? Good, thank you. Not bad, thanks, buddy. So what fish have you got for me, boss? Gold pen snapper. Oh, magnificent, mate. Then we got a nice rock all that the comes rock also this morning. That's beautiful fish. Magnificent, mate. Baramandi here. Beautiful. Nice. beautiful. Then beautiful, we mate. have some red snapper. snapper. And huge Spanish mackerel. Jeff's hit the jackpot. That's beautiful. That's big. the one. Yeah. I want two exactly that size. That's magnificent. So even I want to yeah, do that one. Jeff now has the fish he needs to freshen up the menu. Nah, it's pretty special. I'm, I'm very, very happy. The quality of the seafood was sensational. Within hours, the chef unveils his creation. Lovely. Make sure lots of colour, please, guys. Let's go. Honestly, this is one of the perks of the job as a chef. You get to work with magnificent product like this. So they want things which are a bit different. A whole roasted uh, Spanish mackerel caught locally. Can't get any better than that, really. With fresh seafood, Jeff brings new life to the buffet. And rejuvenating the long voyage earns him top praise. Well, it's a lifetime experience. The meals, the service, have just been outstanding. Next up, the event most passengers have been waiting for, the Great Barrier Reef. The cruise ship Celebrity Solstice is on day 11 of a 17-day voyage, and she is now entering an area most passengers have come to see. She has traveled 750 miles from Darwin to reach the entrance to the Great Barrier Reef. The famous reef stretches over 130,000 square miles, so large that it can be seen from space. The channel at the entrance to the reef averages just 43 feet deep, and at its narrowest is only half a mile wide. 
There is a couple of areas that is getting quite shallow. One of those areas would have around four meters other kill clearance by the time that we will be there. All large ships passing through the reef require a special pilot to come aboard for two full days to guide them. Compulsory area starts here, Captain. Okay. So I'll be up on the bridge to assist. It's the job of pilot David Richardson to guide the ship and protect the reef. Nowhere else in the world does one pilot guide a ship for so long. He will get little more than catnaps over the next 40 hours. I started off in 1976. Uh, things were a bit different then. There were, occasionally you had the radar and occasionally you had a, a guy who could steer. Now it's all pretty well GPS. And, but it's good to see this ship has the old paper chart as well. David now guides them into the channel. Peppered with islands, inlets and shoals, and with strong tidal streams of up to seven knots pushing at the ship. These obstacles combine to make running aground a real risk. But under the reef pilot's experienced navigation, Celebrity Solstice cuts through these waters at an impressive 16 knots or 18 miles per hour. There's two ships there. Then there's an obstacle ahead. There are two ships in front of us which are slowing us up. They're going through slowly because of squat, so they have to take it very gently. Squat is when a vessel moving through shallow seas causes the water flowing below the hull to move faster. That creates a low pressure area under the ship and makes the ship squat down closer to the sea floor. The faster the ship moves, the greater the risk of running aground. Squat is not a big issue for Solstice, but the cargo ships ahead of her already sit lower in the water, so they've slowed to a crawl going through the shallow channel. And with no room to pass them, Celebrity Solstice has to slow down too. Unfortunately, we've got to drop back and let them get through first. And uh, safety first. We're all guardians of the reef. The ship's perfect adherence to schedule is now set back. Time that her captain hopes to regain once the reef is behind them. Another day passes. David has been up all night. It's grueling, but if he has learned anything in more than 35 years on the job, it's how to stay awake. Well, you have to do fatigue management courses. The length of the passage, which as I say, is anything up to 40 hours, 50 hours, that can be quite a challenge. So the fatigue problem is, is always there. David guides the ship into the morning light and into the worst weather of the entire voyage. The timing is bad. Today is the day for the planned dive excursion on the reef. So that little corner there is for us. And that's when I say we're going to drop the bullseye. Hours later, Celebrity Solstice arrives at Airly Beach, their jumping off point for the reef. The bad weather gets a little better, and the dive excursion is going ahead as planned. The captain has to anchor the ship in a specific location where he knows he can do no damage to the precious coral nearby. Forward mooring station, stand by to drop the port anchor. There's a very precise uh, position that I want to drop the, the anchor. Forward mooring station, let go the port anchor. Tenders take those who want to go to Airly Beach ashore and two large charter boats transport the snorkelers to a dive barge off the coast. Shore excursion manager Ava Mikulkova is anticipating a big day, even though these are the choppiest seas of the trip. It, 
take some time to get here. It's actually over two hours and the ride here was a little bit bumpy, but it's okay. We got here and it was great. The sun came out. So hopefully everybody will enjoy snorkeling. I'm very excited. I cannot wait. I love snorkeling. The guests are just as eager to dive in. The boys are really excited to go to the Great Barrier Reef. We watch some videos at home to prepare them and they're just like, wow. And so we are really excited. I want to see a parrot fish. We're really, We're really excited, excited to, to see, see the Great Barrier, Barrier Reef. Reef. I saw the fish that I went to see. It was great. It was huge. How big was it? <laughs> it was like this big. <laughs> it was bigger than that, I think. No, we find it. Bigger than my arm span. So, sorry I can't put it into perspective. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was neat to see the kids out there trying to chase the fish and just being in the middle of it. So, a little hard to keep track of everyone. The Great Barrier Reef lives up to its legend. But as they leave Airlie Beach, the moment the crew has long been dreading has finally come. The seawater temperature hits 32.5 Celsius, or 90.5 Fahrenheit. The engine room has to reduce the ship's speed and divert power to the air conditioning. That cools things down for now, but it might just make for a late arrival and a bunch of hot-headed guests in the days to come. Celebrity Solstice is off Australia's northeast coast, traveling into some of the warmest waters on the planet. And now, that water has exceeded 90 degrees Fahrenheit and pushed the ship's cooling capacity to its limit. So far, Captain Zizus Teramas has been running the ship on just two of her four engines to save fuel. For uh, each engine that you put online, per hour you need to burn close to three tons an hour. But it's been an unusually hot summer down under, and the seawater here is so warm, they've had to reduce the ship's speed to bump up the air conditioning. Captain needs the power generated by a third engine to make up for lost time after the ship was delayed sailing through the Great Barrier Reef. He has no choice. You need the third engine online because of speed requirement. Okay. Okay. Okay, Captain. Uh, Alex, uh, start uh, diesel engine number four. We need third engine online. Starting diesel engine number four. A third engine is powered up, consuming an additional 72 tons of fuel per day. So if you multiply that by the fuel's price, then that would be a quite uh, big uh, check. It's not an expense the ship's owners want to incur, but the captain knows that staying on schedule is his first priority. After a day and a half, and $100,000 in extra fuel, the ship moves into cooler waters to the south and returns to normal operation on two engines. The crisis averted, the ship now arrives in Brisbane for the next adventure, one that only Australia can offer. This is Barnacle. Uh, he's one of our males. He's about seven years old. And as you can see, he's a little bit awake at the moment, looking around. They do spend a lot of time eating. Around about uh, 18 to 20 hours when they're not sleeping, they'll um, be eating. And yeah, it does take a lot. They do eat about four to 600 grams of leaf a day. They're very used to people. We only have them out for 30 minutes at a time, so we make sure we're not working them too much either. 
so cute. I've been waiting to hold a koala all day. Very lucky. Don't get to do this very many places for sure. For some, this is the highlight of all the shore excursions. Well, it's something we've always wanted to do, come to Australia, see the koalas. Yes, very That's much so on our want to do list. Really enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. Passengers return to the ship, where Chef Jeffrey Haviland is capitalizing on his expertise with native Australian cuisine by preparing the local equivalent of venison. You can feel the texture of the meat. Look at that. That's perfect. Basically, we've taken young Skippy the bush kangaroo, <laughs> bred specially for us, and we're serving uh, basically rare roasted kangaroo fillet served over a celery a puree with some glazed carrots, a little shiitake mushroom, and a beer juice. Nice round dish just to highlight those wonderful eating qualities of the kangaroo. The daring dig in and Jeff's culinary skill and creativity once again pay off. There is one last port to visit ahead. Celebrity Solstice will be the largest ship ever to pull into the harbor of Newcastle, where she'll have to maneuver into a berth that's only 130 feet longer than she is. The port itself is a special port. The Celebrity Solstice is the biggest ship in terms of length and tonnage that has ever, ever called in this port. The port uh, has taken our size into serious consideration, has asked uh, for a uh, tack boats, which uh, actually will not uh, assist us in any way, but they will be there as a backup. Hey, Captain, how are you? I see you again. Local harbor pilot Scott Clinton comes aboard to guide Celebrity Solstice. From five knots to here, yep. to there, yep. Yep. no problem. Okay. With ASI pods and the technology that these ships have now, we're quite comfortable to bring this sort of ship in. I will use you on the bow for us as now. Yeah, just hold the bow and just back it right You'll uh, clear number five by about 40 metres. 40 metres, please, thanks. That's the entrance. We're at a totally exposed sea entrance. So the ship will roll quite heavily and it gets quite a difficult task. You have to concentrate. Now, the ship's powerful azipods go into action, bringing her in sideways by GPS. As the captain predicted, the tugs just stand by as the huge cruise ship nestles up to the pier. You just check the doors. Captain and pilot together bring her in for a perfect docking. Doesn't get much better than this. You're perfect day. The best conditions we can possibly get for bringing a ship this size into the port of Newcastle. After a brief shore excursion in Newcastle, are fired in honor of Celebrity Solstice, the largest ship ever to come here. Though the final docking is in Sydney, a short sail away, the huge ship's 17-day adventure has already been picture-perfect for the passengers. Paradise. Just paradise. The Celebrity Solstice is an awesome ship. It's been an amazing cruise all the way around Australia, and I'm going to remember this cruise forever. While the crew has worked hard to smooth over a few bumps unnoticed. To be on the ship, you have to have uh, quite uh, good stamina. You have to be uh, resilient. You have to have very, very thick skin. If something doesn't go right, uh, you'll be challenged the following day. So it's, that's also very interesting. It makes no two days the same. And um, you do develop uh, great relationships with the guests. Celebrity Solstice has proven that she can adapt to the tough challenges of Australia's vast, untamed shores. Every summer, she will take thousands of passengers to the outer, exotic reaches down under, exploring the continent's marvels from her comfortable decks. Celebrity Solstice, first in her class, has found her new summer home. <laughs>